Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to another Beard Guys video. Today we are going to run through the patch notes for next week's update for PUBG. We're going to talk about PUBG going free to play, which is happening next week as well. And I'm going to show you some gameplay footage from the PUBG PC test server that I got today, looking at some of the things that are coming in this update. So there's a bunch of interesting stuff in these patch notes. I'll put a link to them down below if you want to go and read them in your own time. But we're going to skim through it briefly and just talk through some of the interesting parts and give you uh, my thoughts and feelings on that. First off, it's definitely worth just noting the maintenance schedule. So here we have this. Next week, the servers are going to go down on the evening of the 10th. If you're in uh, Europe, it's going to be 7 p.m. CET. I think that's going to be 6 p.m. UK time. So that's going to be what? What, like 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. So that is what Monday. Yeah, 10th is Monday. So servers are going to go down Monday morning, US, Monday evening, early evening for UK. And they're not going to come back up again until the 12th when it's live with free to play. And that is Wednesday. It doesn't say exactly what time at the moment. I don't know if that's going to be midnight or in the morning. I assume it's probably going to be around their normal maintenance time. Feels like a reasonable guess. So that would be, you know, late morning. Morning, UK, Europe, maybe. But hopefully it might be live early in that and we'll see it live early morning or something, or maybe even midnight as we tick over like a game release. But no specifics on that yet. They said they need a bunch of downtime because there's a lot of back end stuff to switch the game to being free to play on all these different platforms. It's going to be on PC, Xbox, PlayStation, all at the same time. All with this update, it is the first time that Xbox and PC, I think, pretty much are getting the update on the same day, which is great. I don't know if that will continue. But uh, yeah, you're going to have much. Monday, Tuesday with no PUBG. So I hope you can handle that. Uh, I'm sure you'll probably manage. And then on Wednesday, you'll be able to jump in. And so will everybody else as PUBG will be completely free to play. You won't need to have Xbox Live Gold to play it. You won't need PlayStation Plus. So that's all to be said on that. I am going to be streaming on Wednesday on the 12th. I don't normally stream on Wednesdays at the moment, but I'm going to be streaming then. I'll get live in the morning whenever it's live. Uh, I'll be jumping on and streaming through the whole day. So come and hang out if you've got any questions about it or you want to see how it is you want to see all the newbies then come along to twitch.tv slash the beard guys and i will be streaming then i'm also going to be streaming today if you want to come and play some custom games i'm streaming custom games today probably right now so jump over to twitch come and join the fun and play some pubg custom games with me and with the rest of our community so moving on from the maintenance stuff we can see some of the new content in the update we have some new tactical gear so there is is now a drone added uh, is the first one to look at it's kind of as you might imagine a drone would work really it's a thing that you find on the around the map takes up a, a primary slot so it will replace one of your pro two primary weapon slots so you can only carry one main gun and the drone and you deploy it you fly it around it can fly up to 300 meters it makes a little noise and has a blinking light so it can't completely sneak up on everyone it will spawn on every map uh, it won't be in ranked i believe and it can also pick up things it can pick up one item and bring it back to you which can be a pie off the ground it can't loot crates it can't loot bodies but it can pick up stuff off the ground it could be five bandages it could be some ammo it could be a med it could be a gun so it can pick up uh, a gun and fly it back to you once you've flown it away you can go in and out of the drone view you can press a button to make the drone recall to you and it'll fly directly back towards you you could then be in a vehicle potentially and drive off and kind of have it follow you as a little helper with some stuff it is carrying while you drive away so you could have it carry your gun and then have your drone kind of in your inventory while you drive off thank you Dome, for showing me that on twitter so there's a few cool things with it you can't shove c4 on it and fly into enemies before you ask you can glitch it on there somehow at the moment but that's going to get fixed but generally speaking you can't just slap a c4 on it and fly it at people like you can in call of duty and stuff like that it has 35 hp and it can be destroyed by all the normal things that might destroy it gunfire explosions vehicle collisions etc it doesn't seem to take damage from colliding with terrain so you can fly around pretty carelessly and whack into walls and stuff and it won't suddenly uh, explode so kind of an interesting little thing you know i, I don't know how much i'll use it but i'm sure i have some novelty for a little while i don't think you're going to use it very much in solos because you're just going to be standing there extremely uh, vulnerable but um you know it's kind of interesting we'll see how that one 
plays out. There's a big old list of the controls for the drone here. I won't bother going through all those, but they are on the link down in the description uh, if you want to see what they are. They're not terribly complicated. The other tactical gear they have added is the EMT gear. I'm not sure what that stands for. Emergency medical something, Travis, but it's uh, it's a med medical box thing. You can pick it up and it takes, again, one of your primary slots. So if you want that in the drone, then you're going to be Mr. No Guns. And it basically buffs all of your kind of healing abilities, but takes up a gun slot. It's kind of kind of interesting. So if you've got it in your inventory, but you're not holding it, then it gives you a load of like passive buffs. So it will only take three seconds to use healing items like first aids and med kits, which is great. Uh, it will only take three seconds to revive a knockdown teammate, which is obviously great. They walk faster when using heals. Bandages and first aid kits, kits can heal you to max and med kits will give you full boost. So some massive buffs you get from sacrificing that armor slot. No, sorry, that primary weapon slot is is pretty nuts. Uh, and if you hold it as well, then not only do you get all that stuff, you can use your heals on your teammates. So you can you can heal up your teammates when they're hurt. It does say a couple of those things don't apply in the blue zone, the shortened revival time and the healing boost. I think the speed to heal in the blue zone. So you can't stand there dropping first aids every three seconds and tanking the blue zone uh, indefinitely, which <laughs> would be kind of novel. So it sounds really, really powerful. Obviously, you'll be playing with one gun, but uh, you know, if it's one member of your squad's got that, that could be could be pretty interesting. So that one sounds more interesting to me than the drone, really. I think there's going to be some nuances to that that we'll probably figure out over time. I guess it's going to be in solos. It just says it's going to be available in normal matches, customs, training modes, etc. So interesting one to check out. Those are the two new tactical bits of gear added in. The next big thing added is the tutorials and new training stuff. So they've added in a load of new training stuff to help with new players coming to the game as it goes free to play and you have to play through some of this before you can play the main game now i think you're all gonna have to play it when it goes out on wednesday probably it's not going to take you long i did it earlier there's a basic training mode which is actually like a classic game kind of tutorial thing where you walk through a few gates and it's like you know jump over a wall uh, pick up a gun and shoot a target take a med you know that kind of stuff takes like one minute but very useful for completely new players pubg's never had anything like that so it is handy it tells you a few basic features buttons that normally people would have had to get from YouTube or Reddit or whatever. So that's very useful for new players. Try not to be too mad about it. Then once you go through that, you then get asked to do an AI training match. You can play, I think, up to 10 of these, which is it's like casual mode, but it's against all bots. So it's just 99 bots and you on Erangel. And you can play that. You can get through it by just doing these four missions, which is get five kills, win a chicken dinner, loot a care, one item from a care package and drive 2,000 meters in a vehicle you can do that all in one game very easily uh, and get that ticked off or you can play more of these matches if you particularly want to or feel you need to but that's a new thing for you know obviously new players to fight some bots um, will be pretty handy and not just for fighting bots for them just getting used to landing from the plane for them getting used to picking up and looting things to driving the circles and whatever so again i think that's you know a good thing to see very promising to help some of these new players coming into the game once you've played those 10 matches i don't believe you can play any more that's you can do after that you do get normal casual mode will be available as it is now so you can play up to three of those a day with 12 real players and the rest of the people being bots on erangel it does look like you might be able to do that in solos i'm not quite sure if that's just a test server thing but the moment on the test server it looks like you can play casual mode in solos rather than one man squads and squads only so we'll wait and see what is on the live servers when that goes out but at the moment that seems to be how it plays out the ai matches don't count towards any of the stuff that casual mode does at the moment so career passes battle stat all that kind of stuff um, you can't boost your stats by playing those ai matches these are some new lobby tutorial missions they're called to sort of help new players you can complete them and unlock a few cosmetic items you know normal kind of stuff nothing too exciting just to help out new players a little bit the original training mode is still there and has been tweaked a bit in a really nice way so they've changed the layout of the map a little bit and a few other things we'll talk about in a sec but one thing they've added is this menu where you can just spawn in guns you can spawn in attachments items not vehicles at the moment because they removed them from training rooms kind of annoyingly uh, i guess maybe in anticipation of this because they felt like it might be silly if you can drop like 10 brdms on your head but it would be fun 
Uh, this is basically what you get. So PUBG partners get access to a thing called sandbox mode on PUBG PC custom games. And that allows us to bring up a menu very much like this where we can just spawn things in. We can fly around and it's kind of like a debug kind of cheat mode you can use in private custom games. So you can make videos, you can test things out or whatever, make up city custom games and race, you know, 100 BRDMs or something. It's very much like that. It's kind of handy. You don't have to run around and grab stuff. You can just spawn whatever gun you want, wherever you are. It's very useful. You can bring that up by pressing the comma key on PC or holding the view button on Xbox or touchpad hold on PlayStation. I tried it out earlier, works very nicely. You can also tweak your sensitivity settings from this menu, which is useful. So that's a really nice addition to training rooms. They've also added the practice range, which is a sort of room you can go into. You go through this door, it takes you to a private area. There won't be anyone else in there and you can shoot at these targets. There's these buttons you can press to move a target to a different range and then it kind of shows you your score for shooting them and just a little private indoor area, which is kind of nice if you want to get away from the chaos of having someone standing next to you firing an M249 into your head for five minutes, then uh, you can come into this private area and do it. So a nice addition there. There's also changes to some of the targets in the training room, ones that move around at random, ones that move around quickly and all these different kind of things just to make it a little bit more dynamic uh, and interesting. They've also added some background noise reduction for training rooms to make it a bit quieter as it's normally a mess and you have to kind of manually turn your volume down. So that should hopefully make things a little bit more palatable in the training room. Action queuing is another big thing. People have been asking for this for a long time. It's basically allows you to kind of queue up the next action whilst you're waiting for something to finish. It's going to be disabled by default. I'm not sure why. So you'll need to go into gameplay settings and turn it on. But it means like if you hold down the exact example it gives if you hold down the firing key whilst reloading then your gun will fire immediately after the reload action ends so it can save you you know milliseconds or whatever performing a second reaction particularly firing useful stuff like that so be interesting to see how that plays out see if you notice it if you see if you find it useful they've also made these changes to the winnie and the vss which are quite interesting which both guns have built-in scopes and they've basically made adjustments to give you the option to use them up close a little bit better the winnie basically gets a kind of flip sight like like the p90 so you can switch between using an iron sight and using the scope that it comes with and the vss is a little bit different it gives you a slot that you can put a canted sight on so you can equip a canted and then switch between the canted and the vss's built-in scope so nice little change for both those guns makes them a bit more flexible will be fun to see both quite fun guns to use and now a little bit more powerful with that versatility other than that they've removed the old pgc stuff now that's over they've removed cacao our friends and Christmas themes. So it's back to Dino Land and all the Christmas stuff will be gone. Another big thing regarding gameplay is the DBNO balance, down but not out. So DB, down but not out is when you're knocked, but you're not killed. That's down but not out. And they've adjusted this to... Well, it says the adjustment focuses on decreasing the amount of annoying down but not out executions, which might ruin the game experience. So it's kind of to try and make it harder to die, basically, once you've been knocked. So you, you get less pissed off about it. So it says the uh, so there's a time it takes to enter DBNO, which used to be one second is now one and a half seconds where you're actually invulnerable. I hadn't even realized that if I'm perfectly honest, but I don't play a lot of squads. So it just makes it a touch slower for people to instantly spray you out and thirst you. And then the big thing they've done is change the bleed times of when you're knocked. So first knock is now 90 seconds and it's out of 83. Second knock, you get an extra five seconds. Third knock, you get a big load of time. So second and third knock, both 30 seconds rather than third knock used to be 13 seconds. So that's the biggest change really is third knock now is more than doubled how long you can survive. So very forgiving there. That's going to be a very significant change. You won't need to panic too much about those revives quite so much anymore fourth knock is about the same 10 seconds fifth knock is the same and then the other ones are technically new but they're very short times so anything from fourth knock is still going to be pretty sketchy but third knock yeah kind of interesting they've also increased the speed you can move at when knocked by 10 percent apart from underwater that's the same but crawling around you move 10 percent quicker they've reduced frag damage when knocked by 20 percent you now get the full benefit of wearing level 3 armor when you're knocked but it does also then say sniper rifles crossbows and the winnie are not affected by the dbno balance and damage has been increased so sniper rifles 35 percent crossbow 12 and a half percent so it sounds like you should be able to thirst people out a bit quicker with sniper hits but generally otherwise they're going to be a bit harder to thirst out 
They've also added in a ping on screen system. They used to have this at one stage. I can't remember if it just got tested, but not really implemented or put in and then taken out. But there was a thing and people pushed back about it. But this is basically being able to do in-game ping. So you'll click somewhere on the screen and it'll put a marker down that your teammates can see. So you can mark something on the screen, not just on your map, but literally on the screen, like that yellow marker you can see there. Uh, and that will stay there and you can figure out where things are. You can mark a piece of loot. You can mark the enemy's position, whatever. I think the arguments about it before was that it dumbed it down a bit. It took away some of the, uh, you know, the, the skills, the knowledge of being able to make good call outs. If you could just put markers down, which at the time I probably agreed with. I think now I'm not sure I really care, to be honest, but uh, it'd be interesting to see how it is, see if it's an improvement to the game i think overall you know majority of people playing video games are going to be casual players and does this appeal to the casual player i think it probably does i think that's pretty reasonable to say so um we'll have to wait and see how it is it's not available in ranked and esports which is great it'd be a bit weird in ranked wouldn't it so um yeah that's a new feature it'll be fun to try out see if it's any good see if it's terrible they've changed the mini maps they've all looked the same for quite some time but they've now tweaked them to try and well we've applied the same quality of curves in the mini map or in the map to the mini map. So they've made it look a bit different. You can see Erangel here, the bridge looks a bit different and nicer. And the sort of contours around the sea and the hills look a little bit better, I would say. Here's Miramar. Looks a bit nicer for sure. Sanok, it kind of feels like the contours are harder to see on Sanok. Like some of them are not really visible now when they were before, but that certainly looks a bit of a nicer, crisper image. And then they've also got Tago and Vikendi, and I guess they don't care about Paramore and Karakin and Haven. They've also updated the lobby. You can see here, it's got a nice animation with the plane opening in the background. Looks very nice. GG's PUBG, well done on that. Nice one going in to free to play with all the new players joining us. And then there's a bunch of other random bits and bobs that probably aren't very interesting improve match report and various things to do with settings oh the settings one is quite interesting actually so they've changed it so your default firing mode for various guns is all on full auto rather than before it wasn't now by default your ars will be full auto which is a nice change for the newbies arriving and be like why is my m4 on single fire they'll be on full auto now uh, which is great for them also goes on to list a few little bits about polymers and all that progressive weapon scam kind of stuff and then it says xbox cloud game Gaming service end that is ending xbox cloud gaming is coming to an end that was part of game pass apparently i never used it but uh is something that is going to be ending and then there's some bug fixes which i won't go through but you can read if you want to so that is everything from the patch notes hopefully you found it interesting uh as i mentioned i'm streaming today playing custom games if you've got anything you want to talk about from this come along to twitch check that out and then i'm also going to be streaming next wednesday when this goes live for free to play so very excited about that i can't wait really looking forward to it. I hope lots of people come along. I don't know if Wednesday there'll be lots of people. It might have to wait till the weekend to really to really see the impact, but it's certainly an interesting time for PUBG and uh excited to see, you know, how it goes. So, thanks very much for watching today. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Hope you have a lovely weekend if I don't see you on the stream, and I'll see you next time.